Hi guys, this is Tekken57 and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to import custom meshes into a wire object file. This tutorial is for WW2K19 and below and uh, a custom mesh is basically any type of mesh that you can develop yourself using a modeling tool or a mesh that you want to import from another game into uh, the WW series of games. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be assigning uh, Scott Steiner his uh, chain mail. And uh, for that purpose, firstly, I've selected a wire object uh, which I can use as a base. And then thereafter, I'm going to inject his actual chain mail mesh from the PS2 Here Comes the Pain game. Okay, so the object that I've selected is a wire object from WW2K14, the Xbox version. Um, and uh, I've selected one of the create a wrestle parts. Uh, this Y object is the same format as the format which is used in the PC version. Alright, so the object I'm, I've selected is this uh, headgear that, that you can see in the viewport here. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is um, we need to import the um, object into 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to run a script that I've created which is called uh, import, WWD, import WWE Tekken PS3 Xbox 360. Okay, I've amended the older scripts that I have to uh, specifically look at how the weighting and the rigging is done on the PS3 and Xbox 360 models. And I've also uh, edited another script created by somebody else where for the importing of PC models. So I've decided to separate the two because the rigging is done differently. Okay, so I'm gonna run the script and I'm gonna select the uh, wire object that I'm working with. Okay, so you can see this is the object and it has a number of bones assigned, etc. Alright, now we need to import the Here Comes a Pain mesh and um, we need to position and scale this mesh to, uh, to the same size as the mesh that we're importing. So I'm just going to import the uh, Here Comes a Pain object. Um, and I've already done the positioning and scaling to save some time. Alright, so you can see that this um, Here Comes a Pain mesh is pretty much positioned over the, uh, the original creator wrestler part that I had imported. Now, we need to do a couple of things to get the mesh prepared. <coughs> Firstly, you'll notice that the if you look at the amount of uh, vertices on the mesh, it has 93 vertices and if you look at the uh, polygon count, it's 146, alright, whereas the um, whereas the object we're importing over has 578 vertices and 966 polygons. So this means that we uh, this means that the object that we are importing has much less detail as compared to the object that we are importing over. So you can import it the way you want, but it's not going to look very good in game. And because the original, the object that we're importing over has much more vertices and polygons, we can actually increase the vertices and polygons on the object that we're importing to make it look better in game. All right, so let's do that. So. If you look at the amount of vertices, it's 93, and we are importing over 578 vertices. So the way in which you can increase the polygons and the vertices is to use the Mesh Smooth modifier. Okay, and I'm going to select the Classic mode. The class the, you can select whichever one you want, but the, for me the Classic mode works well because um, for me the classic mode works well because it retains the boundaries of the object so it doesn't change the shape of the object too much it just makes it a little bit higher resolution so it's increased the number of vertices uh, on the mesh and also just to check how many vertices and faces it has I'm just going to run the multi res tool the multi res tool basically um, allows you to reduce the amount of polygons and vertices um, we don't need to run it in this instance because we are actually increasing the amount of vertices and polygons but I'm just using it to check how many we have 
So we've got vertices of 476 and a phase count of 912. Okay, so let's just compare this to our file again. So the amount of vertices we have is 578 versus 476. So that's that's okay because it's less than or equal to the vertice count that we have. And then also we need to look at the amount of polygons that are in the original. So if you look at the phase strip count in X-ray, it's 1,642. And our phase count here is 912. So we shouldn't have a problem uh, importing this object. All right. So I'm just going to delete the multi uh because we don't really need it. And it's also good to have the polygon and vert, vert count a little bit lower. We also need to uh, flip the normals on the object. And uh, this is going to increase the, the polygon count somewhat. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you now. I'm going to select the normal modifier. I'm going to ensure that flip normals is selected. Unify normals should be deselected. All right, so now the mesh is prepared and we are ready to import this into the game. Um, okay, before we do that, you need to have a plugin installed which will allow you to export the mesh into the NIF format. Okay, the tool is called NIF Tools Max Plugin 4.0.0.b3. Okay, you can Google this and uh, you can download this okay um, you'll note that this uh, tool you'll note that this plugin is for 3d studio max 2015 to 2018 so unfortunately you're restricted to working with those versions of 3d studio max all right once you install this plugin uh, you will have the option to export uh, to NIF format from 3d studio max so i'm going to select file import import selected and I'm going to select the NIF format. Okay, I'm going to specify where I want to export to, and I'm going to select NIF. Okay, you need to give this a name. So let's call this chainmail underscore here comes a pen. All right. Now there are a couple of options that you need to select on the uh, NIF dialog box. So I'm going to select uh, Dark Age of Camelot because, uh, because X-ray only supports version 10.1 of the NIF format. All right. Importantly, you have to select Generate Strips. Uh, you can select Normals and you must make sure that Update Tangent Space is deselected. This is very important because uh, this uh, will mess up the UVs. One other thing I, I need to mention, which is very important, is that once you export uh, into NIF format, the UV map looks completely broken in X-ray. And if you try and import the object back into a 3D Studio Max, you will not be able to edit the UVs. So please make sure that you do all your UV editing before you do any exporting to NIF. And also make sure that you save the project that you are working on here. So in case you need to later on go back and edit the UVs, you need to open this project again uh, edit your UVs and export to NIF again. So please remember, once you export to NIF, you cannot edit the UVs. Very important. All right, I've already done the UV editing and stuff, so I don't need to change anything, and I'm quite happy with the mesh the way it is. So I'm going to hit the export button. All right, now I'm going to open up the object. And I'm going to select import faces you'll see that the button will turn green. When you hit the import button, because you've selected the import faces option, uh, X-ray will look for a NIF file rather than an object file. Okay, I'm gonna select the object which we created, which was the chainmail underscore here comes a pain. Okay, and I get an error. The error is stating that the faces on the new mesh is greater than the old mesh, reduce the number of faces on the new mesh. The old face count is 1642 and the new face count is 1844, which means that we need to reduce the amount of detail uh, on the mesh mode tool. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the normal modifier and I'm going to reduce this smoothness on this to say 0 0.9. Okay, so that will reduce the amount of 
um, vertices and polygons which are generated and I'm going to run the normal map modifier again and then I'm going to run the normal uh, modifier again and I'm going to export again All right I'm going to select the same object and I'm going to select dark edge of Camelot and hit export okay we'll try again hopefully it will take this time okay and it has been injected successfully okay sometimes the UVs on the mesh may look messed up in, in X-ray sometimes it may display correctly okay if it looks messed up in X-ray do not panic because uh, the UV map will still be correct Nick, because the uh, mesh has been re-triangulated and the UVs are corresponding to the triangles that have been assigned to this mesh when exported to NIF. So even if it looks incorrect in X-ray, it will display correctly in game. Okay, in this instance, the UVs look correct, so we are quite lucky. Right, now, if you are working with a static object, like an arena object, or you are working with an object uh, like a prop, um, which do not have any rigging assigned to it, meaning that uh, there is no movement of the object, um, then you don't need to go any further. You can inject this Y object into your game and it should work without any issue. All right. If you are uh, injecting an object which has movement, in this instance the mesh is rigged to the head and the shoulders of the uh, wrestler, then if you import this object into the game, because you haven't done the rigging, you'll find that the mesh looks completely messed up. All right, so one quick way to check whether this is uh, rigged or not is um, we can just export the weight. And if you open up the text file that has been generated, um, you'll see that uh, there are multiple bones which are assigned weight. And uh, because of this, it means that the mesh is rigged to different bones. If the mesh is a static object, usually it will have 0, 1, meaning that um, the mesh is only assigned to one bone and there's full weighting on the one bone. So this is usually the case with arena objects because there's one bone and this bone doesn't move at all. Same thing for props, you'll notice that they, uh, there's usually one bone and this doesn't move. So different parts of the mesh don't need to move individually. So that's an easy way to tell. However, in this instance you can see there's multiple values, so that means we'll need to rig it. Okay, but for now, I'm not going to rig it. I'm just going to import this back into the game. And I'm going to show you what happens if you don't rig it. All right, so if you look at the mesh running in game, you'll notice that now it's, it's not moving correctly. There are bits that are uh, protruding outwards. And uh, it looks like there's parts of the mesh mess missing. Okay, this is because it's not been rigged correctly. So I'm going to exit. Okay, now we're going to fix the rigging of the object. So what you need to do is you need to export this object after you've imported it into X-Ray. Now you cannot work with the object that you've imported into 3D Studio Max before doing the NIF import because once you export into NIF, it re-triangulates the polygons and uh, the, uh, the order of the vertices is different. So we have to export from X-Ray, import this object back into 3D Studio Max and work with this object. So I'm just going to call this object 0, um, imported chainmail, so we don't get confused. Okay, I'm going to go back into 3D Studio Max. I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to um, import the one that we've worked with. I've actually positioned the mesh uh, in the interim while the game was loading um, so that it appears on top of Scott's standard shoulders instead of clipping into the model. So that's why it looks a little bit higher than before. Alright, so now we need to uh, take the skin modifier from the original Y object and copy it to the chainmail that we are looking, that we are working with. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it onto the new mesh that we have imported. Okay, now before we can export this, we need to uh, look at the number of weights that's been assigned to this mesh. Um, 
we look at the weight count in uh, X-ray, you'll see that there's a weight count of four for this mesh. So in 3D Studio Max under advanced parameters, when you've selected the skin modifier, you need to uh, select the number of bones which will be affecting the skin. So at the moment, the bone effect limit is set to 20. We want to set this to four. Okay, so we find now that this is rigged. If you move some of the bones around, you'll find that this object will move with the bones, hopefully. Let's see. See, it's moving with the bones correctly. All right, so now I'm gonna run a script to export the bone weights to the file. So you select the object, you select the skin modifier, and you run the export bone weights to file. Okay, and this is now gonna prompt you for a part to save this to. I'm just gonna call this object zero, I'll just go chainmail. Okay, now we click on the import weights button and we select the text file that we just created from 3D Studio Max. All right, this has been imported successfully. Then we're gonna import this model back into the game. And if we look at the object in game, now the object is moving a lot better. Okay, I'm just gonna assign it the correct uh, textures so that we can see what it actually looks like which are prepped for the game so let's do that <coughs> all right and now if you look at the, the mesh running in game you can see that it's moving correctly the textures look fine and there's no distortions on the mesh at all. So this means that we've rigged the model correctly and the correct weights have been applied. All right, so that's the end of part one for the tutorial. I think I'm gonna break this up into two parts. That concludes part one of the tutorial. In part two, I'm gonna be focusing on how to import head meshes onto wrestler Y object files, um, which is a little bit more complex than this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, happy modding. Take care.